Danville's Dr. Ephraim McDowell was an experienced surgeon who had studied medicine in Scotland and Europe. The McDowell House Museum honors the surgical skills of Dr. McDowell and the courage of his patient, Mrs. Jane Todd Crawford. Together, they made medical history on Christmas morning in 1809. The McDowell House Museum is known, of course, for the famous operation by Dr. Ephraim McDowell in 1809. And we have two floors, we have a pharmacy, we have two gardens, and the house was built in two stages, back part 1790s and then front part 1803 to 1804. Here at McDowell House, we have three different types of gardens. We have an apothecary garden, which is on the right side of the house. We also have a formal garden, which is on the left side of the house, if you're looking directly at the house. And toward the side of the garden, there's a small kitchen herb garden. The herb gardens were used by physicians. They were also used in all of the homes at that time because they were necessary. They didn't have any place to get herbs other than growing them unless they imported them in. The medicine garden was critical because there really weren't any pharmacies at that time. So the doctors pretty much had to go to their own, their own resources in order to grow the herbs that they needed. Here at McDowell House, we have a formal garden, which was fairly unusual for that day and age, uh, especially in Kentucky. If you lived on the East Coast or you lived in the better part of Virginia, such as Jamestown, there would be formal gardens around. But in Kentucky, there weren't that many formal gardens. So they were kind of ahead of their time when they put in a formal garden. By putting the formal garden in, they brought in the fact that they wanted to have a social life here within Danville. They didn't want to just be a business. They wanted to have a social life. Dr. McDowell's most famous patient was Jane Todd Crawford, and she lived over by what would be today Greene County. Jane believed that she was pregnant. She was very, very large in her stomach. And I've heard pioneer women had a baby about every two years, so nothing unusual there. Everyone thought also that she was going to have twins because she was very large. She ended up having a lot of pain and believed that it was time for the twins to be born, would have taken to her bed, and a local doctor was called in. So a messenger is sent out to Ephraim McDowell, and he comes on horseback to her home. And he was able uh, to do a quick exam and ascertain very quickly that she was not pregnant, that she had a very large movable abdominal tumor that was not her uterus. And he said that it was potentially doable and that he would be willing to undertake that if she would come to his home and plan to stay there for the operation and for the recovery. And the patient, Miss Jane Todd Crawford, had the courage to ride 60 miles from Greene County, Kentucky on horseback in a cold winter and, and, tr and put her trust in Ephraim McDowell. He made the big step when he said, if you come, I'll do it. And I still would like to have seen the look on his face weeks later when he answered the knock on his door and there she was. The blood must have drained from his face, and he must have said, oh, Lord, what have I gotten myself into? I've got to do it now. He only had 25 minutes to do that operation because there was no anesthetics at the time. She could easily have bled to death. And if he hadn't worked quickly to remove that tumor, and he had to do it in two parts, she could have easily died. It was a high-stakes operation. Some would have thought you're doing a good thing, you're doing a brave thing, and your patient's being a brave uh, patient. Uh, uh, others would have thought, oh my gosh, you're just trying to make a name for yourself, which he obviously was not. He never even mentioned it. He did it several times, the same operation. Later, it was years before he ever wrote it up or really told the medical uh, society uh, what he had done. 
I commenced the operation, which was concluded as follows. Having placed her on a table of the ordinary height on her back and removed all of her dressing, which may in any way impede the operation. I made an incision about three inches from the muscularis rectus abdominis on the left side, continuing the same nine inches in length. Parallel with the fibers of the above named muscle, extending into the cavity of the abdomen. The parietes of which were a good deal contused and which we ascribed to the resting of the tumor on the horn of the saddle during her journey. The tumor then appeared full in view, but was so large that we could not take it away entire. We took out 15 pounds of a dirty, gelatinous-looking substance, after which we cut through the fallopian tube and extracted the sac, which weighed seven pounds and one half. Then we turned her up on her left side, so as to permit the blood to escape, after which we closed the external opening with the interrupted suture. We then applied the usual dressings and put her to bed. In five days, I visited her, and much to my astonishment, found her engaged in making up her bed. I gave her a particular caution for the future, and in 25 days, she returned home as she came, in good health, which she continues to enjoy. He could not have performed this operation without having his training in Edinburgh. McDowell was well prepared to perform such a operation on Jane Todd Crawford as he did. Danville was lucky, Jane Todd Crawford was lucky to have him here where he was at that time.